Hello and welcome back to our, one of our second vlogs from within side of Minecraft uh, for the writing bursary project. Hello. Hello. Why, why are we, Hello. Why are I'm reading? Adam Clark. This is Victoria Bennett to my Hello. To my I right. I introduce myself. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, Victoria. I'll get uh, I'll get this. Hello. Hello. I'm Victoria, or otherwise known as um, B Wild. Yep, that's that's my name up there. That's, that's your name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, welcome back. We're um, we've been making some progress in our world, exploring how poetry and Minecraft can be mashed together. Uh, not so much of the mash. No. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's get on with it. Um, there's certain bits and pieces that we're going to show you, and also show each other. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get. Let's we'll, go. we'll start over here. This uh, this array of weird blocks. Guess what you're looking at now. Okay. Um, ten points. Woohoo! Yeah, ten points to ten points. anybody who can oh, guess. I am. Whoop! Can't walk that way. We've also got a chicken called Ted Hughes who's wandering about. Ted Hughes, look. <laughs> He's okay, so I now have Ted Hughes and inside. Yeah. My poem. Yeah, and Ted Hughes is wandering all over your poem. Hello, Ted. So this it, this array of what is called command blocks. Uh, each command block can uh, do certain things. So command blocks are basically uh, really cool ways of uh, changing the way Minecraft might behave. Um, let, let me right click on one, and you can kind of see here. It's actually kind of opens up almost like a programming language, and, and Minecraft has got that within it. Within this programming language, we can do things like we can create titles. So we've got kind of forward slash title at a, which is at all players in the world, and then we say title, and we've got open brackets. Color is white. Text is October, and that's in in brackets as well, and then uh, in, in in inverted commas, and then we've got our closed wiggly brackets as well. I'll press done and each block of like that is also kind of connected to a different world this is what it looks like if we press it I'm going to just press this one here and I'm just gonna look up at the sky so I've got a nice background too okay so you can see it's kind of whizzing through a load of words hmm. which is a one way to describe my writing yeah <laughs> so we're, so we're basically trying to find out ways of uh, having creating text in inside of Minecraft okay and breathe yeah and breathe. okay so what I'm immediately noticed with this is this is interesting to see it in front like this as I'm walking around, um, but it is just like this cling of the river to reveal a day so full. So it becomes very um, mechanical in the sort of way that I would imagine a, a criticism might be of how could you have poetry in a world like Minecraft? It'll be blocky. That text is exactly what I would think that that yeah. would mean. Yeah. How then can we make the experience of of, of reading the poem in, yeah. in front of you as you're moving around mm. be the same as or close to what the poet and poem is trying to sound like? Yeah. So instead of I don't think I wrote a poem where everything is the same intonation and the same space <laughs> between each poem yeah. piece. So. So well, I mean, partly um, the reason for that is it's it's actually a product of uh, of how this was put together. So this is literally an array of words. So basically, what we did was we used, I used a filter uh, in another computer program to generate this uh, these blocks and also to generate all the commands inside the blocks as well. Uh, there's a short delay between each one, and that's why it kind of uh, it, it's been it's been read it. like that. The trouble with that is that it was actually it was actually designed for speed reading. Uh, there's a little application called Spritz, and it's it's almost like echoing the speed reading thing. So it's kind of trying to improve mm -hmm. people to re reading speeds. Which is about the opposite of what this poem absolutely actually, so, <laughs> actually would so, be intended to be read. So like. <laughs> here's another here's another example of of how we can kind of maybe um, organize the way the speed of delivery of words on screen. So here we have. Uh, you know, we've got a word October, and then we've got these um, spaces. Yeah, these are called redstone repeaters. Okay, and redstone repeaters are kind of we'll we'll send a signal along here, and you'll be able to see it. But we can slow that signal down or speed that Come signal up. So let me let me show you for an example. So if I press this one here, you can see it running along there, and we've got. Well, oh, hang on, these aren't my words. No. They're just random words. Just random words. They're just, okay. <laughs> they're just random words. You can actually right click and edit inside of these if you want. But I thought this was a, a little example to try and kind of. I'll press it again. We can kind of see. So October stays there. Matter, love, beauty, in 
So they are just random. We just I just sort of picked a load of random words out the corner over there and put it all together just to sort okay, of so test out. So what we out. can have is using the redstone, we can actually create um, a visual experience of how I would be intending the poem to be heard. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of going into the, the, the area of, of, of the poem being read in a way that so that it sounds internally. Yeah, in so the way they're intending. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's so we're using those spaces to create the the, yeah. the same intention as the punctuation and yeah. space around words and, and line breaks. Absolutely, and we can kind of really control yeah. some of these so bits for, and pieces as well. So for people like me um, mm. that might not know, these would not be visible. No, none of this stuff this is needs like to hidden. be absolutely. We're, we're revealing it. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're kind of this is the guts of of the mechanics of some of the gameplay mechanics that Minecraft has got yeah. uh, within itself. So when you go onto a Minecraft game and it's like, whoa, this is actually yeah, like the stuff yeah. That's you can going control all sorts it. of things. So we can actually trigger these depending on where the player is. Um, mm -hmm. at, you know, so could you do it so that you could like pressure pad so you could jump around so you can move from one word to a different oh, word that might be really awesome boing, to do yeah boing. so then you're kind of rewriting the poem yourself yeah we could do yeah i mean definitely there are definitely ways of doing pressure pads so how we trigger words on screen might be another way of doing this because you know we were talking weren't we about the fact that um kind of our intention is to create something that that allows the person to be a, a listener yeah and a reader and a participant within the poem. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when we're talking about, so the reading stuff is what boing, we're, we're boing, looking at boing, now. So we've boing, got, we've been boing. experimenting with ha words on screen, which is the, oh, this Ted. title Ted. command over here. Ted. We've got Ted Hughes, which is a, ne we've Teddy. renamed a Teddy. chicken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can basically rename everything in yeah. Minecraft. Okay. So this is over here, this is Ted Hughes. And if you get close to the Ted, Oh, I'm you, going the wrong direction. And you put your um, you? you put okay. your thing over, uh, your reticule over the top of Ted Hughes. You'll see he's got his name appears on top there. So that's that's a really useful Ted thing. Hughes. Ted Hughes. We can also, um, and here's another example of uh, maybe putting words on screen. Um, here's an arrow, so we can kind of call it the. Um, what should we call an arrow? Quill. Uh, no. Quill. Okay. Um, destiny. Des destiny, spear of destiny. Destiny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so there's there's destiny. Now we can put that up into one of these things, which, oh, that is, was a, an which is a frame. Yeah. Uh, anvils are okay, these are kind so of interactive book. blocks. Book of poems. Soil. Yeah. So, well, can, how do I move backwards? Um. Well, just press there. S. Yeah. Soil. Soil. Destiny. Destiny. So we've got. And it's rain. We've got different ways of. Um, um, so again. So these could either give you single words, or can you click on them and go somewhere? Well, we could actually use. Um, we could actually use. Could they be? Command... Could they trigger audio? Yeah. Well, that's the next thing. I think what we've got is we've got words on screen. We've also can actually create our own audio packs uh, and custom sounds. That could be whole lines of text. That could be whole poems that we've mm. actually recorded ourselves and we put into a resource pack. So, for example, if I go to options go to resource packs down here um and uh, we could use that one well anyway you'll see what i mean it'll all change so a resource <laughs> pack is um is is a way of changing the look and feel and texture of minecraft none of the things really look very different at the moment but um if we were to look at the grass at the top that looks a little bit different and if we were to look at a few other different things in here oh here's here's an example I'm here's a space bar twice and i'm not jumping i'm not getting here's up. a here's a here's a this is a very special block so it's a jukebox um, and jukeboxes normally do not look like this. So resource packs are very useful for that. We've also got ways of kind of putting our own sounds into uh, Minecraft as well. We haven't recorded any of those sounds at the moment, uh, but we will be doing very shortly. So I'll just get that out like that. So resource packs are great oh, and they up. can be embedded into <laughs> into a map itself. <laughs> what are you trying to get? I'm trying to get up to you. Oh, double tap space bar and then press space bar again. Tap, tap, space. Or maybe you're not in creative mode. Hang on. Uh, uh, yeah, game mode, creative. <laughs> Thank you. Be wild. There you go. Thank you're you. You're all creative. Now. I just thought I was being really. No, no, no. You're fine. Okay. So, um, so I think you know that that's this is the stuff that excites me. How to change the environment that we're in. Okay, so I'm um, gonna just whiz over here since I've learned how to fly. Oh yeah, cool. 
over here you can see this we've got the goth and the mm, psychedelic here oh yeah so there are two these black oh this giant black let's object let's have a look let's have a look uh, let's if i fly in from above you can kind of see it a little bit better it's a yeah. giant uh, one of those sort of traditional labyrinths kind of quite an ancient design so we've got a black and white one which is quite nice um oh i seem to be above something okay um Hey. So we were thinking about labyrinths, and we were talking about them last time, weren't we? I'm walking around on the top. Where are okay. you? Okay, I'm inside. I've okay. gone inside. So what I want, what I'm interested in, is how we can use the structure of a labyrinth um, within a poetic form. So I've been looking at that off screen um, structures in poetry, kind of at different different points in history, mm. that may relate to the the labyrinth form. So we've started creating labyrinths out of blocks. Now a labyrinth is an explorable journey, not a maze. There is only one way of doing yep. a labyrinth. Mm. Um, there are no dead ends. And uh, you reach the center and then you come out again. Uh, I, the experience is, is, is a meditative one, although a meditative one, although in this case it is not so meditative no. as much as prison -like. this is dark and oppressive <laughs> okay. and then so i thought let's... i'd so that's the one we started off with and then i thought well it's too dark and oppressive so, so maybe we should make it a bit more colorful mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's a bit too colorful and this it? is a bit too fabulous um fabulous and um and again all most of this stuff was done in a program called mc edit which allows us to edit the way minecraft looks and feels Okay. So where's the other one? Oh, it's over here. Can you fly with me? So Victoria kind of, you know, we, we've had some design discussions and we were trying to make the labyrinth a little bit more friendly, mm -hmm. a bit more meditative. Meditative. More... Well, it, we're starting to do, oh, I seem to be in white mist. Oh, you're in a cloud. All oh, right, is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, now I'm inside fabulous. Okay. 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 So, so with the next one, you've kind of gone for a more traditional maze-like look. Yeah. So we've got kind of wood and and leaves. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit more like that. And also, it's very shallow. So you, you can don't feel have the sense like of, you can kind of you can of being... jump over it. You know, it's not oppressive. Yeah. It's a bit more um, like you would go out to a a, a fancy uh, posh house, and they've got one of these in the back garden. Victorian kind of labyrinth. Kind of. Anyway, so. Um, I want to push it further though. I want this. Mm -hmm. This is what sets what I'm setting oh, yeah. off in my mind. I want this structure yeah. to become the lines of the poem. So that not only are we using a labyrinth structure within the poem, mm -hmm. but then the poem becomes the labyrinth structure itself. So these are actual words. So this would be words, yeah. So if we were to draw this out on a piece of paper, then this would be kind of words yeah, yeah. flowing around. So let's say, you know, obviously this is this is not where I would be going with the poem, but mm -hmm. let's say we're kind of studying here. The cat sat on the mat. Yeah. Now the difference is obviously you walk between the words, don't mm -hmm. you? Uh, you walk between. Ye so these are not the words. Oh, these, I see. You, so you like 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 the words, the words like you walk between like them. this is the word. Yeah. And like, so we're walking around words. Yeah. So, yeah, but we, I mean, we, from, we'll play, I mean, from our previous one, we had the word room, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we made rooms out of the rooms. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go down here where we've got the word labyrinth. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to drop down. The word labyrinth and up over here. and the word labyrinth down on the there's floor. There's the word up, yeah. And then we're going to, I'm walking over to the word down. Okay. So now... What we're actually doing is entering into the labyrinth. Yeah. And we are within a room. Yeah. So which takes us back to the idea of the stanza being a room. So then this becomes an experiential space. Yeah. Um, and like um, these are because of the perspective. Yeah. Mm. Because of our, um, our literally our perspective. Because when we're close up to these giant words, it you know, becomes environmental. Mm. to our perception so we're walking in and through 
uh, different uh, and over and over and yeah, so it's, it's part of our over. environment so we can kind of we can, and under I suppose if we mine yeah we can kind of get the player <laughs> I'm to over. And I'm this over is, now this is more Whoa. a more kind Hello. of playful way of doing it mm -hmm. and then of course if you change their perspective even more if we were, if we were to take them further up then of course they would Hello. be able to see um, the whole thing the whole thing which kind of starts me thinking about what is you know, how do we perceive a poem? How does how does the poet manipulate that in terms of wanting a, a, a reader, an ex, a listener to experience a poem in a certain way, to perceive, yeah, perceive the the, the poem in a certain yeah. way. So if we can shift those perspectives, the yeah. person starts becoming more integrated with the poem. Yeah, like if you can move from instead of having to follow the linear linear um, direction yeah. that the poet intends, then what happens? Can mm. we start altering the way? That, I mean, one of the the nature of, of Minecraft is that you can interact with, can't you? Yeah, um, you can you can break things. You can you know well there's there's all that, or you can kind of send people on adventures, and mm. it, it depends on what we want to do. And I think you know yeah. as far as we've also discussed about. How we're going to present this stuff at the end of the day? Uh, you know, part of it might be dis might be this might be displayed as a kind of a let's play video, mm. like you would see on YouTube. Because let's play videos on YouTube are watched nearly as much as people play Minecraft, mm. right? So it's an art form in itself. I think it would be interesting to to create something that can be experienced in more than one way. So it can be experienced uh, as a with with our you know with us directing that experience mm. which is what you're saying about a let's play like kind of, yeah. but also to be experienced in a, a kind of a, a freer way where where somebody can take an adventure within the the poem as a map yeah where they may they may actually take take the direction of the journey in, in a different way to which i intend right. yeah not not to break it up but to Read it. To read in... it in their own way, because I think when, you know, when I found this as a poet that I mean, I'll write something, and somebody will read it or hear it, and they will bring to it their own experience, so their own perspective, their own interpretation mm. of it. Sometimes it's exactly where I've been going with it. Sometimes it is actually what's within the poem, but I haven't found the found that out for myself yet and that's always a really interesting experience when a <laughs> when a reader uh, actually ends up telling me <laughs> what the poem's what about. the poem's about it's like oh mm. oh it is yeah. oh you're right oh, i didn't yeah. realize that consciously um <laughs> so do you think this is more about our next our next thing is all about audiences and kind of you know uh, I mean, we've got we've got we've got some solid ideas about what we'd like to do, and these are some of the kind of these are early experiments into we've been building, haven't we? You know, we've been building on screen, fiddling about with this stuff. Um, in terms of how can words, where, where is the relationship between the two? Yeah, I've been building on paper. Yeah. Whoa! I didn't mean to do that. Um, mm. to 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 work on the narrative, the story within it, and I think that yeah. that, that you know our next stage really is. Is bringing those explorations together in her, dare I say, a more concrete form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are looking. You're looking at concrete poetry. I have been in looking that sort at concrete poetry, right. um, but I've, you know, not. I've also been looking at um, you know po poetic forms, concrete poetry being being one of them, mm. um, and also about where cool. where where we can take game game yeah. of poetry yeah so i don't know i think it's going to be a little bit of a busy time yeah cool but it's going to be quite interesting and i think it's about you know at the moment this is really like a sketch pad yeah um definitely you know it's a, it's a, a blocky inter <laughs> interactive is, interactive sketch pad. i definitely see this as a bit of a laboratory um, for yeah. us to kind of uh, mess around so, with it. You know, we've, we've, we've looked at, at words created through redstone. We've looked at words in terms of the, the little picture things. Mm. Um, we're walking around and through and above words. We've looked at the labyrinth structure. What about actually books, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, we saw I a bookshelf over there. 
So this is the last thing, and because we are just swiftly running out of time. So oh, yeah. it, uh, Minecraft has got its own books, and you can right quick click them, and you can write in them. Okay, uh, and you can sign them, and you can name them book <laughs> or whatever you like, mm -hmm. and you can sign and close them, and then you can actually give them to mm. other people. So you can offer these books. He's about. throwing poetry at me. So ah! the, this is great because we can actually enable the re re people to leave things behind if they want to, or kind of, um, or or us to actually write stuff down, mm. write little snippets of um, of poems and things like that for the reader um, to pick up and read for themselves. So mm. there's a, I think there's a whole variety of ways, and we've really, um, we're really kind of exploring. I like our idea of the labyrinth. I like our idea of kind of um, combining that and making sure that we've got an adventure for for readers, for players, and for listeners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I guess well, we, better, we better go. We could better get back working to it then. Yeah, better get back to it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks very much for listening, everybody. Get back to the mind. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll we'll get back to kind of making this uh, all okay. happen. <laughs> I'll follow you. All right. Lead the way. Okay. Lead right. the way. Until next time. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. bye. bye.